Let's look at number 25. Okay, let's look at number 25. Um, so the good thing about these problems is they're always going to be paired up the way that we need them to be paired up, okay? Um, just if you think of the words you at the beginning. Yeah, okay. Um, they're always going to be paired up the way we need them to be, okay? So we're going to kind of pair these off. We're going to look at the first two, okay? We're going to look, look at them as a thing, and then we're going to look at the, the second two, bless you, um, as their own little thing. Okay, so looking at the first two, between 15x cubed and 18x squared, what is the GCF? 3x squared. Okay, the largest number that will divide evenly into 15 and 18 is 3. And then the first term has x cubed, the second term has x squared, so x squared is the GCF there. So let's go ahead and pull out the GCF from those first two. When we take out the 3x squared, we're left with 5x plus 6. Here's a good point to stop yourself to make sure that you did it correctly. Distribute that back in and make sure you get 15x cubed plus 18x squared. Here comes 5, 16, x squared plus x squared, x cubed. 3 times 6 is 18, and you've got the x squared. Okay? Let's look at the second pair. Between 20x and 24, what is the largest number that will go into those? Four. Okay, and when we take out a four, they don't both have a variable, so the number's the only thing there. When we take out the four, we're left with five x plus six. Here's what should always happen with factoring by grouping. When you take your two GCFs out, the binomial that's left should be to both of these terms. Okay? The GCF should be common to both of those terms um, because now it's like we're going to technically factor out the GCF again. Okay? If you look at this as one single term, 3x squared times 5x plus 6, that's one term. 4 times 5x plus 6 is one term. They have 5x plus 6 in common. So it's like we're factoring that out and we're going to leave the GCS. So that's why it factors the way that it does. So after this point, we pair the GCFs together and then we write the common factor. Okay, this is what I call the common factor, the one that they both have. The common factor is written only once. Okay, I know in the step before that it shows up twice, but you've got to look at that as it's common to both of those. We're factoring it out to check um, your work here. Now, let's look at 26, okay? Same deal, but when there are some negatives in there, there's something that you have to do, okay? There's something you have to be aware of. So when we're looking at 56 n cubed plus 24 n squared, what's our GCF? 8 n squared, okay? 8 n squared. 8 times 7 is 56. It's got an N left in there. Um, 8 times 24 is, or not 8 times 24, but when we take 8 out of 24, we're left with 3. Now, for our second two terms, what can we take out of 35N and 15? 5, but notice, since that 35N is negative, we need to factor out a negative need to take out a negative 5 because if we don't then our signs will not match up with the other binomial. So if we take out a negative 5 we're left with positive 7n plus 3. We have our common factor of 7n plus 3. So our final answer put the GCFs together list your common factor once. Check it. I'm not going to go through 
that right at this moment, but you could. Now, something that I have not mentioned because it hasn't really applied, but every once in a while, you'll run into one of these that will factor, like what you get right here, that may factor again, okay? Or the eight and square minus five, it doesn't, but that could potentially factor again. So once you do this, you should do a quick check to see if anything will factor uh, one more time. Yeah, I put a bunch of problem on there, I think, for that reason. Okay, well, let's look at 28. Let's do one more. Okay, let's do one more of these. 9n cubed plus 12n squared minus 15n minus 20. GCF of 9 and 12. 3n squared. So we're left with 3n plus 4. Between negative 15n and negative 20, we need to take out a negative 5. So we're left with 3n plus 4 get the same thing. If you don't get the same thing, you can't do it. Okay, you can't do it. So we are left with 3n squared minus 5 times 3n plus 4. Okay, uh, now I do have a bonus problem. So if you want to put this on your paper where you wrote down the steps, let's do 2x cubed plus 9x squared minus 8x minus 36. Okay, now on this problem, when we're looking for a GCF with the first two, you may get a little concerned. Two and nine don't have a common factor. That's okay. The coefficients don't always, usually they do, but not always, okay? But you do want to take out the common factor of the x squared. Okay, negative 8x minus 36, we want to take out a negative 4. We're left with 2x uh, plus 9, okay? That makes me feel a little bit better. We match now. Okay, 2x plus 9. We've got it in both. So we put the GCFs together. x squared minus 4. List the common factor. And here's what I was just talking about a second ago. x squared minus 4 factors further. Okay, x squared minus 4 is the difference of perfect squares. So we're not actually finished with this problem. x squared plus 4 factors into x plus 2 times x minus 2 and then we need to bring down that 2x plus 9. So if I were solving this equation, okay, right now I'm just factoring it, but if that were equal to 0 and I wanted to know what x values would make that equal to 0, by factoring it like this I know the three solutions. Negative 2, positive 2, Now really our purpose in factoring is going to be we're going to work on rational functions, okay, which means we have a polynomial in the numerator and in the denominator. So the purpose of factoring for us right now is going to be so that we can identify some uh, characteristics about their graphs. But we will start with that tomorrow. We just need to make